Uh, it's Ebro Lauren Rosenberg. Uh, welcome, Royce the Five Nine. Friend of the show. Friend of the show. Friend of the show. And, and who's this young gentleman you have brought with you? I'm going to let him introduce himself. Hello. Uh, my name's Nassan. Yeah, big fan of you guys, by the way, too. Thank oh, you, thanks, man. Yeah, I appreciate. Yeah, I appreciate being up here. This is crazy. Yo, I, I when last time I saw uh, Royce in Detroit, he was he was telling me about you, and now I see the the rollout is happening. Yeah. Things are all happening now, huh? Yeah, for sure. I'm super excited, man. Wait, well, I, I don't. What do so, you do, sir? Oh, I, I rap. I make music. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He makes the raps. Well, Royce does a lot of things, so I didn't know. Mm. You know, is this an actor in a movie? Is this uh, a singer? Is this a rapper? Is this, <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, yeah, is yeah, he, yeah. you know, I don't know what you guys are working on. My fault. Yeah, yeah. And how did you guys meet? How did you guys connect? Actually, uh, his manager. I um, I used to work at this adult strip club called Sausages. And uh, no, I'm playing. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> Wait a second. Nah. Oh, hold on, really? Nah, like, where are we going with this? <laughs> nah, nah. Him and my father. My father was uh, proof of D12, mm -hmm. so they had a relationship. So it's like me and him are like family in a sense. I look at him like an uncle, yeah. and he took me up under his wing. Um, I was over at Def Jam up under Paul Rosenberg, and I would just always come by, and then I just built a really, really great relationship with him. And he's been like a mentor and tutor to me ever since. So, yeah. Uh, so you say you're a rapper. Yeah, yeah. What you should be rapping about. I mean, you, you, you got to tell me, man. No, you, he rap about some things. Yeah. He rap I mean, about some things. Yeah. I did I, I did a little dive the other day when I knew you were coming up. And yeah. Oh, man. You're doing some things. That. Yeah, I more so pride myself on like just being a creative artist overall. Like, rapping is cool. I think I was just saying this story the other day. Like, I went to the studio with Marshall one time, and he was just talking about how much he loved rap. And then I was like, yo, he's different. This is not, that. that's not for me. And I kind of, like, had to find out, like, what was for me. And I'm just, like, I, a creative. Like, I, I direct, edit, you know what I'm saying, all of my music videos. And they're crazy, by the way. I'm not even, like, to my own horn. I think I have, like, some of the greatest videos out right now. It's super refreshing. Um, yeah. So when, like, I, I, uh, we live in a time right now where, you know, what do they, what do they call it? Multi hyphenate. That's yeah, yeah. Right? Multi hyphenate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's yeah, a very hybrids. Hybrids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, uh, you know, some people are great at it. Some people aren't. Yeah, yeah. At where you are right now, I love that you're doing that, right? Because yeah. you, you know, you have something that people in eras before you didn't necessarily have the opportunity to do. Like you kind of had to specialized to get into the game. Yeah, right, right. Um, but is there something that inspired you to want to get into the game? Because you said you, you was in with Marshall and you could see his love for rhyming was yeah. far beyond yeah, yeah, your yeah. love for just rap. You love yeah, exactly. a lot of things. Yeah, exactly. Uh, for me, the introduction was just like, man, I'm an egocentric guy. It may not look like it, but like my second time in eighth grade, yes, my second time. Well, it's unfortunate. Um, yeah, it's just like being on the back of the bus and just like rapping with friends. And the excitement I would see every time it was my turn to go, it just drove me to like, that turned it from doing lines on the back of the bus to like doing actual songs and then like being talked about in high school. I actually went to school with Yachty. I remember he was like always like the cool kid. So mm -hmm. like I remember him pulling me to the side of the lunch table one time just like being like one of my songs was hard. And that was like enough validation for me, like, yo, I'm gonna keep going, you know what I'm saying? Like so. well, was Yachty already a thing at that time? No, nah, he wasn't, but he was just like super he was just like super cool amongst school because he did like he would host the pep rallies and stuff. He always had the red hair. He was the weird kid. But but people looked up to him because he, he was the had, cool weird kid. Yeah, it's like he had fashion sense, you know what I'm Plus saying? Plus he had them raps too, he could get to them bars. Yeah, yeah, too. like yeah, yeah, exactly. Now I'm playing, but I mean, back then, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, we just looked up to him, though. Yeah. He, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The confidence part of it, right? Like the fact yeah, that he, didn't want, he wanted to be himself no matter yeah, what. Yeah, always, man, always. That's something I admired about him. And I actually, like, learned from him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Is he your biggest inspiration in the reason, in kind of music? Like, when you look at yeah. artists that maybe you were kind of framing your appearance, your creativity, like, who are those people? Yachty, not, not, not so much Yachty, but me, I started rapping because Wayne. But, um, like, Wayne, um, a big fan of, like, on the creative side, man, I'm, I'm a fan of so many people. But on the rap side, it's like, Kendrick is my favorite rapper. I grew up in Atlanta, so, like, Thug, Future, you know what I'm saying? Like, all that is, like, resonates with me crazy. When did you go to Atlanta? 
So my, my pops passed when I was seven. This was like 2006. So I, I went down to Atlanta after that, and I just I grew up there. I just moved back to Detroit, 2021. So how after Proof was killed, yeah. how did you maintain the relationships with Royce, Eminem, the rest of D12? Did those relationships already exist? You were a little kid at the time. Yeah, I was a kid. I kind of had to like... I had to grow and kind of, like, foster them myself. Like, I started rapping in high school, and stuff was, like, picking up, and I would be on, like, MTV and, and stuff and, like, Complex, and then, like, Paul Rosenberg had caught wind of it and then, like, kind of, like, reeled me back in. And uh, that's when I started coming back around these guys, like, when I was, like, 18, 19. So Paul made the made the call and yeah. brought you kind of back into the fold. Yep, yep, exactly. And yeah. now it's in the homie. Yep. Yeah, and, and then, Roy, so when did you guys connect? Um, didn't I see you one time and didn't know it was you? Yeah, yeah, that was funny. Because here, here's my side. Um, me and Proof took him and my son, because they're the same age, took him and my son to, what do you guys have? You guys got Chuck E. Cheese out here? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. David Buster's him, Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we took him to one of them kind of places. I believe it was Chuck E. Cheese. And, um, they were like real, real. They hit it off like him and my son hit it off like immediately. You know, what I mean, it was just a one time thing. Something that me and Proof did. We decided to do one time before our lives got all crazy. So um, that was actually my. I didn't see I didn't see you again until music you said mid- I saw you at one music, of Marshall shows. Music Midtown in Atlanta, the festival. Yeah, I seen him and I didn't recognize him. And then when he started coming to the studio with my son, because they're real cool now as adults. When he started coming to the studio with my son, you know, we started to reconnect. And I was just like, man, I, I remember you when you were a baby because he got the same face. He got his dad's face, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I didn't know he was going to end up being so tall. You know what I mean? So it was just, it's like a full circle thing. And it was something that we totally didn't force at all. Like, I've never been in the lab with him while he's creating music, like holding his hand. Strictly like a mentor ship type of thing so when you as a as somebody who's had success in this game uh over an extended period of time you look at a young man like this who said he had a relationship at you said def jam yeah yeah but, but paul was running def paul jam. was over there and yeah. obviously that and you've been watching it for a while yeah you know um this game uh, you know can chew people up and spit them out mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying and, that's what it's designed so, for yeah but so you being someone who is is helping this young man navigate this game Right? Mm. Have you had that conversation with him? Like, how do you see, and even your son, who you said, you know, works out of the facility that you created. <clears throat> when you talk about this music game, how are you looking at it or how are you helping them look at it differently than maybe you looked at it? To not look at the bad stuff. You know, we, like, we're, program, we're programmed to come into the business looking at all of the bad stuff because all we hear are the horror stories. Mm. And a lot of times when you, when you develop that kind of fear in your mind, a lot of times... The way that you your 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 way of resolving that would be to just avoid it all, at all costs. Like, don't sign a record deal. Don't sign a record deal because they raping artists. Well, what do you mean? Don't sign a record deal. Don't sign a bad record deal. Mm. If the relationship and the, yeah, and the, the and caveat the is to sense. learn. Yeah, is to learn the proper information so people can't take advantage of you. No matter what kind of business you're doing, if you're stepping into that field with no information, then you're gonna get taken advantage of to some degree you know what I mean it just so happens in this business that you know people built empires off of doing just that you know taking advantage of artists so we don't have a whole lot of conversations about that kind of stuff I'm a glasses half full kind of guy you know so we just talk about all the endless possibilities that 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 can be ahead of you if you just stay focused I know what the main things are that, that that held most artists back, including myself. Getting drunk, getting high, you know what I mean? Like the things where you where you kind of like lose focus. Because I know this is just like artists get into the game, they sign a record deal just to say that they have a record deal because they think that that's what they should do. They sign to, to the highest bidder. And when I say highest, I mean whoever's offering the most for an advance. Mm-hmm. All the wrong decisions. And then they start making a little money, and then they come back, and they start complaining about having to loan people money. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? It's like, it's like the same. Over and over and over. Yeah, and my thing is never complain about that. You know, like you've been chosen. You've been put in a position to be able to help people to do just that. What you got to learn is how to be assertive, 
how to give out a healthy amount of nose. You know what I mean? Like Great all of boundaries. These, yes, establishing boundaries, all of these things. Very rarely do I come across somebody in their age range who has any of these things established in their minds. Like we're not, like we were talking off camera, young men are not communicators. Old ones either. You know, I didn't start, be, <laughs> I didn't start being able to communicate until therapy. Yeah. And I was in my late 30s. In my late 30s is when I really, really actually learned how to talk to my wife, talk to my kids, you know what I mean? So That's crazy. It's tough. So if you if you get thrown into the business like me, Marshall kind of like snatched me up and just threw me in the business. I didn't know how to make records. All I knew how to do was rap really well at the open mic. <laughs> That's it. So it wasn't until um, I went to turn in the batch of songs that I had for Tommy Boy when, when I was signed to Tommy Boy. It wasn't until I tried to turn those songs in and we had a meeting and I played those songs that I realized I wasn't as good as I thought I was. Because they were like, we like the songs, you know, but we don't know who you are by listening to them. You got this Pharrell guy all over him. We don't even know who this who he is. You know what I mean? You got five beats from the Neptunes. We, who are they? You know what I mean? Right. Like, it was just like that kind of conversation, you know? So, so Nassan, yeah. um the reason I asked what you rap about, a lot of people seeing you, meeting you for the first time, you're sitting next to a, a legend. Yeah. Right? So there's obviously people going to be right. like, man, fuck out of here. Yeah. This nigga getting a pass, man. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, for sure. It's so funny that you say that for two, for two reasons, because I tried, I tried to disassociate myself as a teenager, because like I said, Paul called wind to me, like, so young. I tried to disassociate myself with them for that reason, because I know that, like, people gonna hold me to a certain standard and, like, man, discredit me, I feel like, and, like, do the whole nine, like you saying. But, um, man, I mean, there's substance there. It's like, I'm rooted in that. It's like, growing up seeing them, like I said, my, my favorite rapper is Kendrick, so it's like, with that, I'm taking I'm taking these bits and pieces from him, and then like he like he's, he took bits and pieces from three yeah, thousand exactly, and tribe yeah. and you know many greats before him. Right, exactly. So so there's substance there, but I think like I've grew I've grew more into like my own artist where it's like certain stuff just doesn't I won't say it doesn't matter to me, but there's other stuff that matters more to me. I love that. Like get, like getting across and like I said, that's the that's the artistic side. That's like Yo, how how can I paint this canvas as crazy as possible? It's like that doesn't have to be through the lyrical miracle, spiritual like, like lyrics. You know what I'm saying? Or like going crazy like the that. The reason I'm like, laughing is because that's been passed down generations. Well, yeah. The, the description well, of, of the lyrical miracle. No, nah, lyrical miracle's been going on the for a long time. Yeah, spirituals. no, nah, yeah, it's different. Spherical. It's different ways to be an artist, man. So yeah, and you are like kind of born of the family. Of lyrical miracle, yeah, exactly. Right? Spiritual uh -huh. spherical, yeah. I mean, that, that's empirical. That's, that's, yeah. <laughs> how do you? How um. I, I know it's weird to say. How is your relationship with your father, who's not here? Right, right. But he passed, and you were so young. Yeah, exactly. How do? What is like your relationship like with him in your head? Do you know him? Has it been a relearning who he is type thing? It's like, man. I'm like lucky enough for me like he passed during the time where like well he passed where like ah, he passed like pre fuck I mean yeah like technology so it's like there's bits and, and videos and stuff of him where like I kind of got to like make out who he is through like stories from like him or like other people experiences and like whatever YouTube videos are kind of like remaining you know what I'm saying like you said yeah he passed when I was super young and like at the height of like their career almost in a sense. So he was like never really home, if that makes sense. He was always like Oh, this is that yeah, that was peak grind yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So they were like always on the road. So I don't I don't really know my f my father as my, I, that sounds bad, but like you get what I'm saying. Like, yeah, I don't really know him like have on a personal level, I feel like, as much. But man, um yeah, I find myself like just like digging through stuff sometimes and just like Cause I am curious, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I be thinking, like, damn, what would it be like to have him in my life? Like, just on even, like, not even him being famous, just like on a, like having a dad, you know what I'm saying? Or yeah, so I don't know, it's strange. It's but strange. it's a unique experience. Yeah. You 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 are like the child of this father who you know is like a hip hop rest in peace. You know what yeah. I mean? Like we we. 
When we first came up in hip hop, it was like there was Scott LaRock and MC Trouble. Yeah. There was like literally two rappers that had died. Yeah, yeah. And everyone shouted them out and it was a thing. Yeah. And then it was like Pac and Big. And then it was Pac and Big and Pun and L and then and, yeah. and then Proof, right? right, like, right. And, and and for Detroit, he's he means one thing. For Eminem, who's one of the most important artists of all time, right. he means one thing. thing right. so it's a unique, it's a it's a very unique experience. Very what um what what does M say about your dad, obviously, like there's a lot made of their relationship. Mm -hmm. um, and what does your relationship with Eminem feel like? Um, we're cool. We're like anytime I need them, like they're there. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't really like bother them as much, or just like go go that way because like I'm still just like growing and just trying to figure things out my own. Like I've always been like that. It's like it's weird that you ask me about my father because like I used to run from that so much because like yo, don't don't kill me, but like. I think being a rapper's son is like so fucking corny. Like, I think historically you are correct. Like that is very like, often the case. It's like so corny to me. So it's like I used to hate telling people that. You know what I'm saying? But um, I had to grow into it and just like realize that like yo, it's kind of a blessing in a way. And um, it's only corny if that is your identity, right? And but that's the thing. That's why I stood away from it for so long because I feel like. Even now, it's kind of weird right now talking about it because, like, I, I feel like there's not enough of a foundation on my own, like, to stand on before we get into these conversations. But I'm so confident in my work that I think that, like, maybe there's people of my who are fans of my dad or, like, of Marshall who will see my stuff and be like, yo, this kid is different. You know what I'm saying? And, like, just become a fan of their own. But um, I can tell you just walking in the room. Yeah. Stylistically, yeah. nothing reminds me of D12. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, completely different. You are your you know own person. You are your own person. Like, so and that's important. Like, yeah, you, yeah, it, yeah. It's yeah. effective. Yeah. Like, literally, I did not know until this conversation when yeah. you said, so my dad was proof. Yeah. I didn't. I couldn't gather that from anything Royce had told me. Yeah. I didn't gather that from your Instagram. Yeah. I didn't gather it from your look. Now that you say it, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah sure. No, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. So I think I'm saying that to give you props. You're doing a good job. Thank you. Thank clearly you, thank being you. your own Man. Right, exactly. One, one of the things I, I want to talk to you, Royce, um, I think it's important for people to know is the way you're helping shepherd young black men, right? As yeah. a black man who I'm sure uh, someone shepherded you as well in many ways, and maybe not so, maybe you wanted more, maybe you needed more as a young man, right? Mm -hmm. But talk about that part of your life today um, in, in trying to help these young black men. Uh, handle their creative process, get their voice heard, uh, find their identity, all of those things. Yeah, I needed more. I definitely yeah. needed more. Um, we didn't really have OGs, mentors. I think mentorship is like the biggest void that's in the marketplace in terms of black culture today. Mm -hmm. um, for whatever reason, well, I'm not gonna say for whatever reason, we know why. The generations that came before us um, when me and Marshall came, Marshall was stomping through, and I was right behind him stepping. Mm -hmm. And all of the go all of the guys that we looked at like the gods, I'm not going to even say names, they just looked at us as like competition. They didn't necessarily embrace us, you know. And it would have been cool to get that embrace. Not, not on no, you know, like coming at them type shit, because I understand what they were probably thinking. I think the game kind of conditions us to, to be more competitive than um, of the thinking, what we can get done in, in, in solidarity. You know what I mean? So um, me personally, just as a man, I've been through so much, and I feel like I was not supposed to survive a lot of the things that I've been through. So I'm definitely here for a reason. And um, once I started, it started with my sobriety. Once I started to share um, be transparent about my sobriety and I started to get the feedback from it and realize that I, I was actually helping people with my words. It gave me a fulfillment that I wasn't looking for. I didn't know that I needed, you know? So, um, when I started to just do things, just stepping in the direction of just helping or making things better, I come to realize that that's what this is about. It's not really about me at all. It's just about, you are the vessel. What can you do with this that I'm giving you that I don't give just anybody? What are you going to take it and how are you going to make the world better? How are you going to make the people around you better? You know what I mean? And that's just, you know, that's the way that I've been kind of stepping and I've been being as intentional about it as possible. So 
I kind of like go out of my way to just share as much information as possible without turning into the corny old guy that's just, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just preaching all the time. So um, they understand me. And I I love talking to them. I love having them. I love being around them because I, I learn so much mm-hmm. about. And it's not even for the for the, for the the corny reasons, you know, like oh, I got to be up on what's going on so I know, you know, how to make something that'll fit today's climate. Oh. I'm, you know I'm not one of them guys. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? So... I just I'm interested in it from a psychology level. I'm like intrigued by it, the way that they look at shit. You know, like when I first seen Joyner Lucas, and I, like the way that he was able to paint these pictures that he would have in his mind before even laying the verse or the raps down in the studio, he already knew what he wanted it to look like. That was incredible to me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then it's like I had a conversation with him one day. He he wasn't really happy with the way things were going. Um, in terms of productivity in his career. And he was just like, man, I should just direct my own videos. And I was like, you should. But I was really just saying it on some, you know what I mean? And he went and did it. And the first one that he directed connected more than anything he had ever released before. And I can only attribute to that, to I can only attribute that to him seeing the vision all the way through and it resonating with people because of that. We received it the way that he intended for it to be received because he was involved every step of the way. And I don't really think it's no different from how, you know, how I, I've been in my career, just on the sonic side. Even in Slaughterhouse, I was the guy in the group who was there at the very beginning of the session, and I was always the last one to leave. It's just the way that I like to work. I even do that with Prem when it's not even necessary. We working on Prime stuff. I be all involved in the mix, and Prem just kind of be like, get out the way, you know what I mean? But it's just... <laughs> It's just my way, you know what I mean? So it's interesting to watch and compare and contrast the way that they see things. And he knows exactly what he wants to see, what he wants to hear. And I don't know if he's wording it all the way perfectly yet, which is fine, you know what I mean? But he's he, he doesn't hang his hat on lyricism, but he doesn't understand that he's lyrical without trying. And to me, those are the best rappers ever to exist. Mm-hmm. The worst rappers that exist today are the overly lyrical ones. I don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even want to hear The lyrical, spherical, yeah. empirical? Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's, Spher- just, it's just beautiful that you let him <laughs> just be a creative, period. You don't tell him what to do, what sounds good, what doesn't. Yeah. And, and I, I think I, that's what his face lights up when he talks about that. I yeah. only understand that because I'm a creator. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's just like management is all the time asking me, to talk. Can you, can you talk to him? Can you talk to him? Because I'm like the translator. You know what I mean? Like I know how to not overstep my boundaries Mm -hmm. and step on his creative integrity because I understand that that's exactly the facet of his art that he hangs his hat on the most, you know, and I get it. Uh, Nason, how, how do, uh, you like to be challenged, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I, you know, hearing Royce talk about the OGs that were around at the time when him and M came, him and, him and M came through. Yeah. You know, I, same thing happened to me in radio where cats didn't want to let you get on the turntables. They didn't want to let you get in the club. They you, so you had to, you know, you had to prove why you needed to get the mic, the opportunity, yeah. the the set, the whatever. You had to do something to get the five minutes, the ten minutes, the, the weekend slot, whatever. You get it, and then you keep getting looks after that. That was the challenge, and I accepted that challenge. And, right. and at the time, I understood that that was just a right to passage. Right. Now... Now challenging a young person that way, it may not be the way a young person wants to be challenged, right? Right, right. Like, they're, because there's so many different outlets, there's social media, there's all this DIY stuff that you could do. You don't have to go specifically through one channel to achieve your goal, right? You could go so many different channels. Right. A lot of old heads screw that up because mm-hmm. they're trying to put challenges and obstacles in your way to see how bad you really want it. Right, right, how yeah. bad do you really want this? And you're like, yo, fuck all that. Like, let me get my look. <laughs> Right, right. But what is the way for you? And it's probably it's not a universal kind of code to understanding people in your generation and, yeah. and, and your and your your um, demographic. But what is that way that you want to be challenged? What is that way I want to be challenged? Um, man, it's crazy. I'm a super competitive person, so it's like if something, I feel, I feel like there's a narrative around something so much. It's like I'm going to try my best to break it. Like even how we were saying, like. Like I feel like I feel like for the longest like people people were like that knew about me because like Marshall had like posted me or whatever when I was a teenager. 
they would just like discredit me so much. Granted, I wasn't the best artist and I still had some growing to do and I had to figure myself out. But it's like I feel like they were giving I feel like they were giving all the life to that and it's like I wanted to work myself out of that. Or like whether it be like after the Def Jam situation, man, I felt counted out. Like it didn't go it didn't go as planned. I felt like I lost in life essentially. It's like I had one shot and I blew it. So it's like I ha- I had to prove to myself Myself more than anything, others too, but like, that like, no, no, I'm not going out like this. Like, yo, I got this, you know what I'm saying? So, and figure, and figure shit out. Like, and that's when I started directing my own videos and you like, showing niggas like, no, y'all have to accept me. I'm too good. You know what I'm saying? And like, it's just been on an upward trajectory for me ever since. So, so it like, is the L. Sometimes the L is the, is the L. challenge. Yeah, You're exactly, not afraid yeah. to take the L. Man, I'm not. I, I think that coming just growing, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's a part of life. You're going to lose. But I, what I've learned is the losses aren't the losses, though. They're, they're wins, in a, in a sense. It's they're like lessons. Yeah, exactly. They're experiences. Like, so you know how to go, how to move and navigate moving forward. So, yeah. Well, I think, I think Ebro, is the perfect time to have the conversation. About that? Did oh. Oh. Rabbit lose the battle in a in mile. mile? Sean, do you have it over there? Bonito, well, put it in the system. So Wait. you've seen this Royce going around the internet? Mm-mm. There's a new discussion. Okay. Okay. You haven't seen this either? Let me, a new 8 Mile no. discussion? Yes. No. Here we go. So here it goes. People are, obviously, it's Eminem's movie, so he won the battle, of course. Mm-hmm. And, he, and he had and the crowd, movie, right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. so, Let's be it's Rabbit. Movie, it's, it, yeah. Right. He, or, excuse me, Rabbit. Mm-hmm. Won the battle. Yeah. But people are saying, yo, if you actually listen, did he actually win based on the lyrics? The bars mm. that were spewed in the battle. What well, round? Wow. It was. The, I think it's the second round. Okay. Does it say the name of? I what? refused to participate in the discussion. It's round my, two, right? My comment was, "Why are we doing this? <laughs> which, which, which battle? You have it, right, Johnny? Yeah, it's uh, round two with uh, do it the white beater. Here we go. What was do it the white beater's name? Lotto. Lotto. Yeah. Lotto. He Did Rabbit like, beat Lotto? He passed away recently too. Oh really? Oh, all right. Rest from in peace. I, from man. what I remember. All right, let's hear it. Johnny, can we play it? It's Lotto's verse. No, it's time to get rid of this coward right here once and for all. Huh? Yo, I'll spit a racial slur, honky sue me. This is a harder flick, but the black guy doesn't die in this movie. Fucking with Lotto dog, you gotta be kidding. That makes me believe you really don't have an interest in living. You think this is gonna feel this is too safe? I got a better chance joining the KKK. Or some real good show, I like you. That's why I didn't want to have to be the one you commit suicide to. I'm out of, call me your leader. I feel bad that I gotta murder that dude from Leave it to Beaver. I used to like that show. Now you got me in fight back mode. But oh well, if you gotta go, then you gotta go. I hate to do this. I would love for this to last, so I'll take pictures of my rear end so you won't forget my sad. And all is well that ends okay. So I'll end this case for the f*** you, but have a nice day. I mean, it's a, it's a solid. I like what he says about leaving the mirror. No, I used to like that show. Like, he's like serious. I, much, much better than what I remember. Right. <laughs> oh, it's your rap. Ward, I think you were a little hard on the beaver. So was Eddie Haskell, Wally, and Miss Cleaver. This guy keeps screaming. He's paranoid. Quick, someone get his ass another steroid. Blah, 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 blah. I hear what did you say. Hibbity hoop, blah. Is that a tank top or a new bra? Oh, Snoop Dogg has got an open boob dog. Did you listen to the last round, meathead? Pay attention, you're saying the same dish that he said. Matter of fact, dog, here's a pencil. Go home, write some shit, make it suspenseful, and don't come back until something don't hit you. You can take the mic home with you. Looking like a cyclone hit you. Tank top screaming, Lotto, I don't shit you. You see how far the white jokes get you? Boys like, I vanilla ice gon' dish you. My motto, my motto, I get the seven digits from your mother for a dollar tomorrow. I, th- I think I think Rabbit wins. I, I, th- I think they got it right. Well, Rabbit he, wins in my book because he took what bro said about the beaver and all that yeah, shit and brother. worked it into his shit. So yeah. he took what you used and worked it into his shit and still came at you. Yeah. But the then, then the oh. internet just looking for reasons to discredit Marshall. Yeah, Jesus. even in his own movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That shit wasn't even close. <laughs> Not even close, right? Lotto did good. Like, did, so yeah. it sounded yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Better than Definitely. you remember. 
Yeah, I think Marshall took it over the top with the theatrics too, and just how animated he yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. So that, was another, ha, ha, ha. that yeah. was another piece we was talking about the entertainment yeah. value, yeah, right? Exactly. The, yeah. Marshall's entertainment, well, Rabbit's entertainment value, but that's also why Eminem is so great. Is yeah, and mm-hmm. a lot of people skip over his greatness is because it wasn't just the bars, right? Mm-hmm. It was the other entertaining aspects, visuals, jokes. Self deprecation. Then you had add in production from Dr. Dr. Like there's so many things. Is it is it Colorful. weird? Is it weird for you to like that's such a culturally impactful film that yeah. like everybody watches? Is it weird to you knowing that in the real life version of that your dad was such an integral part of the whole scene? No, nah, it's not weird. I think it's I think it's beautiful. I, I sometimes I I'd be curious to like. I wonder how he would have played that part if he just did it. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, no, I think it's I think it's amazing. I think they got the point across from what I from what I know. Yeah, I'm happy. You think Mackay Pfeiffer was good? Yeah, I think he did great. Yeah. What do you think? I think he did great too. Wait, did mm-hmm. proof? Did your dad ever have dreads? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got it. And was hosting the battles yeah. at that time, and like Mackay was. The part, movie. I wasn't right. sure if he actually had dreads back then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There it is. Nason, it's a pleasure meeting you, sir. Thank you, man. Yeah, this is cool, man. Pleasure's mine, man. Yo, Royce. Yes, sir. Well, what's good with your music? What we doing? You can't, you, you mm. still do this music thing? I don't know, man. Not sure. <laughs> no, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> um, yeah, me and Prem been working on Prime 3. Yeah. But I've been take, taking my time with it because I, I have like a few other things that I've been working on that I can't quite discuss yet. Okay, fair enough. I'm, I'm, I'm more excited about these two things in particular that I'm working on right now probably more than anything I've ever been a part of. Mm. And that's really the thing for me as a creator these days, just finding things that bring me fulfillment. I think um, I've been writing rap so long, I can kind of give it to you however you want it. And even if you feel like it's good, it may not bring me fulfillment, you know? Right. right, right, right. It's just whatever. For whatever reason, you know what I mean? So, I mean, I guess I guess it's got to be something about it that, that I'm connected to maybe the right verse about the right situation people whatever have you maybe thought about just, have you have you thought about putting out a flute album oh good idea no but listen you making a joke but no I, no no I, we like the flute album up here we're big supporters i totally understand <laughs> where i where he is creatively no 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 i totally get it on on many occasions yeah. i've encouraged individuals Go down the flute path. Yeah. Find yourself. Mm-hmm. Find the sound. Find a vibrate on a higher level. Tap into whatever that... Cause, Challenge you know, yourself. The only reason I brought it up is because I heard you say, I can rap it however you want to yeah, rap. Like, like, when, and I think of 3,000. Like, you can do whatever like, you I want. Love to give, I'd love to give people a, a rap album right now. Yeah. But it, it's just not happening like that. Right. That's how I feel. I'd love to go in and just do bar exam right now. Right. But the bar is so low. You know, it does, you don't feel the motivation in the same way. Well, it's not. I don't know if it's. I don't know if the motiv. If, if if I'm not motivated, I just don't. I, I don't feel it. Like I, right. I don't go Inspired in the studio and feel it. And right. You got. It's a certain gear that I got to be in to, to do those bar exams. And then it's like, well, when you say the bar is low, you mean the con- consumption bar, the 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 world's uh, appreciation for the craft is low, is what you. Yeah, saying. I don't know if I want to use appreci- the word appreciation, but yeah. The, the the general consensus about lyricism, something that I, the the first thing I've ever hung my hat on cre- creatively. I just don't think it's in the forefront right now, you know. So um, to go in and do something like that, the bar exam and how much it takes out of me, and how much time it takes, and how much rewriting it takes, and how how you know being meticulous with it. Mm. I just don't know if the if the if the if that kind of energy. Is worth my time. Let me rephrase that. If that kind of energy being put into that is more valuable than something else that I can be doing as a contribution to the culture, because there's only so much energy that you have. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then and then you know, like I, I look at the people I look up to, like Ho, for instance. I don't personally feel like that he needs to do another album again ever. I just feel like what he's doing now on an executive level, is way more beneficial to the culture than any music that he can do at this juncture. But I feel like when he was at a point in his career where the, the music was the most important, pertinent thing that he can contribute, he, he gave it to us at the highest level possible. I do wonder, though, whether he'll get to another place, because he, he's a young guy. So I do wonder whether you then get to another place of like, well, I did all the business 
I'm now worth three billion. I've now empowered this many people. Mm-hmm. I've got all the, and then you're like, you know what? I'm going to go back into a music mode and yeah. and feel another need to contribute in his 60s. Mm-hmm. Like we we you know what I mean? We keep kind of deciding like when it's going to be the time. But who knows? He can hit a whole nother wave. Because hip hop itself as a genre is just now it's just getting, getting there. To those ages, yeah. So. Like we didn't. I, I, well, you thanks didn't. to thanks to people like Jay and Marshall mm-hmm. and you know yourself and I'm I'm looking at De La Soul out here about to put out another project. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. we didn't. This was never a part. I mean, of Killer any, Mike just, just Killer Mike just won the three Grammys. Yeah, absolutely. So like three. Yeah, three in one night. So why can't Hove at 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 sixty two years old end up putting out a piece that we're like, oh my god, we didn't know he had. And I know it's now at this point it's almost cliche to mention. But when you think about the Rolling Stones and the Bob Dylans and the Paul Simons and these people who just they Stevie Wonder Stevie Wonder they're sitting on Quincy they were mm-hmm. sitting on so much money and they did so many things but ultimately y'all are all artists at the end of the day mm-hmm. and if when it's there I mean four 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 you can argue Jay Z's best One body of, of work best, yeah. or it's right in the conversation yeah, it's mm-hmm. top five for sure no one expect oh it's definitely top five no one expected that I'm proud to say that I designed these really yeah. oh these well, are these, fa- these in particular these are fire bro you can o- you only be able to get these in the arena, Little Caesars Arena. You can't even get these outside of the arena because it is because of the vintage letters. Mitchell and Ness actually owns these these letters. Wow. wow. You know, so um yeah, so I, I've had like a um a working relationship with the with the Pistons for many years. We did uh, a mental health uh initiative over the uh pandemic. Mm. So since then we've been trying to figure out something that we can come together and do. And they wanted to honor Dilla. You know, at 313 Day, which is March 13th in Detroit, um, as well as Dilla Day. And we figured what better thing to do than a merch capsule. So we came together. I got a few of my guys together. I assembled like a a cool team, my man Goose, my man AJ. Um, and then we came up with the designs and we put it together. So And my my Dukes is into it? Yes. So we got the blessings from the entire estate, you know, and it's actually it's actually a little bit of pressure because it's like it's such an honor to be entrusted by them, you know, like to, to, to paint, paint a picture, if you will, with anything involved in Dilla's legacy. His legacy, especially as it pertains to Detroit, it's like something that you handle with delicate, delicate care, you know? What yeah. I mean? So I think somebody like myself, I, I just understand him from a creative aspect having worked with him in the past and I also just understand him from a fan perspective just watching him and just seeing everything that's out there on him in terms of like images and stuff like that so I, I kind of knew what to stay away from what was overused I think I came in as a, as a pretty good translator to keep his his legacy and that did you ever go to the strip club with Dilla I seen him in the strip club. I didn't actually get in his truck and go with him. But you were there. You saw him at the same time. Yeah, he's a strip. He's a strip club guy. No, that's he, that was he, his that's thing. That's all he did. Yeah, yeah. It was make beats, go to strip club. But he was on a different level from me. You know what I mean? Like he was the first guy riding the Land Cruiser around Detroit. You know, I was still poor. You know what I mean? So we just looked at him like the big dog. Yeah. I ran back into him after I was already kind of like running around a little bit. And by the time we start working with each other, it, it was like toward the. Toward the end, you know what I mean? I didn't know he was sick when I was working with him, but right after, we did like six songs together. Right after that, I started to see him around a little bit less, and I started hearing rumors that he was sick. So I never quite got the chance to establish the relationship with him that me today, if I was of this thinking, you know, I would have approached it completely different. But when you're young, you think these guys are going to be around forever. They're like superheroes, you know what I mean? Like, plenty of time. Well, now to think about how young he was when he was here is crazy. And to think about his How much body older work, you are now yeah, than he was when he yeah, passed. And his body of work. I mean, it's, beats, it's more beats floating around, more Dilla beats that nobody rapped on, than there are Royce albums. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Royce and songs, probably. And with all the credits that he has, he has way more unreleased stuff. And, and the ill thing is, if you're a Dilla head, you know his unreleased stuff. Like, everyone knows his beat packs like there are so many classics well you got you got producers and you got beat makers i think he's the best beat maker that i've ever ever heard yeah i don't think many would argue with you yeah yeah the best the best the way so, he made that the way he made the machines bounce just he's just different just, it's just yeah, different it's different and he was doing it minus the technology right today you know what i mean like he was doing it with the SP, the MP, you know, they put all of his equipment in this fucking Smithsonian, bro. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? 
If uh, if you can't get to the arena and you can't, is there any, as fans, how do they interact with three one three day or any of this? Praying, piston, piston. Pistons three one three shop dot com. Pistons three one three shop dot com. But but listen, there are um, there's three three t shirts, four hoodies. These these in particular are the ones that you can only get. But the you, other you can only but get. You can get stuff ones, yeah. on the shop. The other ones you'll be able to get. It's 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 totally different designs. People are gonna like them. People are gonna love them. Actually, no. I didn't wear the hat today. I wore the hat yesterday. But there's also a hat. It's a five panel hat like this one. I mm-hmm. also designed with the rope. Cause that's my thing. That's like mm-hmm. my favorite thing, and it has the logo here on the front. Yeah, and then it has this on the side right here. Wow! Snapback, super crazy. The, the rope fronted five panel snapback, whether it be a trucker or a corduroy, is such a specific black man era. Fire! <laughs> Yo, my dad used to cop them at the liquor store, bro. With the remember they used to have the little sands on the front, or they had the like the little crest with the. Uh-huh. Cadillac crests and all that different mm-hmm. shit on the front. My dad was on those. Right. Heavy. And you can get them at the liquor store back then. At back then, you get them at the liquor store. You know, they probably sell at a vintage yeah, store. Yeah, yeah, that'll be, that, that's that. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? The corduroy the, with the, the. He had the low and brow joint. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He had the Schlitz joint. Oh, come on, classic. He had a Cadillac joint. Yeah. Heavy. Yeah. So I had to bring that, I had to bring that back into the forefront. And I also think that. The five panel is probably what Dilla would be wearing today over just the regular standard Detroit D hat. He was always a little left to center from what you were accustomed to seeing in Detroit. Well, I, I picture him wearing that hat with the multicolor panels too. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was he was a different kind of cat. I never met Dilla ever. Wow. Yeah, I missed him. I, the one time I interviewed Slum Village way back in the day, he was he was already in and out. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it was T3 and uh, and Bot 10 were there, but he wasn't there. Thank you. Royce, Nason, we love y'all. Love you, brother. Love thank you, too, you, my brother. Thank you for bringing this young man up, man. Thank you. There you go. Me.